All right, everybody, welcome into Sports and Money. I am Benjamin Parker. We appreciate you so much coming in today. We, we're doing something very different. We've never done this on, on any of my channels before. We have Jake Franklin from way down in Texas with us today. Um, Jake Franklin is an X's and O's guru. <laughs> I'm going to set you up for a big Jake, okay? <laughs> Jake does a ton of X's and O's study, and we're going to look through about three or four plays today. I think most of them, if not all of them, are from Coastal Carolina. And we're just going to break down some film and talk about things that the quarterback might be looking at, things that uh, might blow up a play, things that might make the play a success, those kinds of things. And, um, and Jake's going to walk through us today. But, uh, Jake, how are you doing today, man? Doing great. No, thanks for having me on, and I appreciate you asking. I'm excited to dig in a little bit and, and hopefully live up to the title of X and O guru. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're coming big, coming strong, coming yeah. hot. Um, and I apologize if that's too much, but um, I may or may not uh, refer to anything on this little board just for um, questions. But for the most part, the, the audience, we're going to be looking at your, at your plays and, um, and breaking it down on there. And this is the, just so, so the audience knows, this is the first time you and I have done this. So if, if the video tonight is a little bit sloppy, we apologize. The material will be great, even if, uh, even if we're not as organized as we might like to be tech-wise uh, from start to finish. But um, I'm looking forward to it, Jake. I really appreciate you coming on tonight, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right, good. Thanks for having me. All right. Um, go ahead and start walking us through the, the, the team we're studying and, and the play and some of the concepts we're looking at tonight. Okay. Yeah, so we'll be walking through Coastal Carolina, uh, their offense. They've been super creative. They're no secret anymore. Everybody's, uh, you know, everybody – knows about Coastal Carolina, especially from the past couple of years. They've been ranked, and they run a cool new modern option, I guess you will, if you will. Um, you know, it's one thing that's definitely uh, leaking into football a little bit more as you see more speed option and midline option, all kinds of different options that you haven't seen teams, um, spread teams run before until the past couple of years. So um, it's definitely a new trend that's coming in, uh, and I guess you could say it's like the old becoming new again. So that's what we'll be going over tonight is just some of the – creative plays that Coastal Carolina has. Uh, there's been a ton of videos done on them. So um, if you want to dig in more on Coastal Carolina, there's about a thousand uh, play videos on YouTube. And then there's a book written about them too uh, by Alex Kirby, which is very phenomenal as well. There's a plug right there for a Coastal Carolina book. But uh, yeah, lot, lots of creative stuff from, um, from Coastal. Hey, real quick, before you dive into that first play, you mentioned, for, for those of us, because not all of us are terminology savvy, and that seems to be one of the big learning de uh, deficits. Yeah. Midline option versus what was the other uh, kind of option you mentioned just a second ago? Speed option. Okay. Um, just real quick, for those of us who don't know the terminology, maybe we've seen it, didn't know what we were looking at. Yeah. What's the difference real quick between midline and speed? So midline option, uh, you're reading an interior defender. So usually um, if you're reading – uh, if you have a midline read, you're reading the first defender that's in the A gap or outside of the A gap. Um, and then speed option, you're usually reading the defender who's on the very end of the line of, of, line of scrimmage. So that could be a walked up linebacker or a defensive end. Um, so uh, there's similar plays, but just different reads. Want Again, midline's more of an interior read, while speed option, you're reading a guy on the edge. That's perfect. That's why we have you on here to explain some of this stuff to people who, you know, maybe we don't. Look at that quite as often. Okay, go ahead and take over the first play, man. Okay, great. All righty. Um, are you able to see my screen? I've got it, man. It looks crystal clear. Thank you. You bet. All right, so I did my best to draw up what is happening in this play. Um, I know it just looks like a lot of uh, yellow all over, but let's walk through it, and I'll make it um, as simple as I can because, again, I needed it in simple terms because that's how my brain works. And so I'll explain it that way too. So here's midline option. And so the quarterback is going to read uh, the first interior defender um, to the left. So they're running the play to the left. So the first uh, defender that's in the A gap, which is right in between the center and left guard, uh, first defender that's uh, from the A gap to outside is gonna be this defense end who looks like he's in either a four eye or a three from this uh, standpoint. And then the, after that, the quarterback will read the next defender outside of him, which is going to be this walked up linebacker right here. So there's midline, which is where um, there's only two options. The quarterback can keep it himself or he can hand it off to the tailback. But this is midline triple. So this adds a third threat to the play. So basically uh, what the offensive line is doing here 
is they're making sure all the other defenders are accounted for besides the two that are being read. So you'll see the left guard, center, right guard, and right tackle take care of all the uh, defenders in the box. And then the left tackle is going to arc out wide. Again, he's not blocking one of these two guys right here. He's going to arc out wide and block uh, the defenders who widen with this play, um, just in case this ball does uh, end up on hitting on the perimeter. So uh, we'll go ahead and run through it a couple times, and I'll run it slow just so you can see there's a lot going on at once. But essentially, just know there's three options on this play. The quarterback can hand it off to the tailback, who is attacking straight down the line, uh, down the midline, and he'll be attacking right at the center's butt. Um, and if that defensive end, the first read, crashes down on the running back, the quarterback can pull it and take it himself. But if that first read, that D end right there, stays put, runs up field or widens, then the quarterback will hand it off to that tailback and he'll attack right down the middle. Um, again, now let's go to the second read. If the defensive end crashes and the quarterback pulls it, this offset running back right here is going to widen out with the quarterback. He'll be outside, and then they're going to read the second read right here, which is the walked-up linebacker. If the linebacker plays the quarterback, the quarterback will quickly pitch it out to the offset running back, who's the pitch man. And if this linebacker widens with the pitch man, the quarterback's going to tuck it high and tight and take it himself um, and hopefully score here. So uh, we'll play it right now. So starting out, you see that defensive end turns his shoulders and crashes down. And so does the linebacker. So the quarterback quickly pulls the ball himself, sees a linebacker crash down too, and pitches it out to uh, that pitch man right there. So I wish I could make it go slower, but this is as slow as it goes. So right there, you see that defensive end. Right. He has his shoulders turned, which means he's playing the running back. And then you see this linebacker right here. He also squeezes down on the run, which makes the quarterback pull the ball, one, because the first read crashed down. And then he quickly pitches it because that second read, who is a walked-up linebacker, also squeezes down. And then that allows the uh, pitch man to get the ball and attack the perimeter with a couple blockers out front. So you can see there they gained about 8 to 10 yards. And one thing that's unique about Coastal Carolina is they'll – send out their left tackle, and we talked about that already. But since, you know, again, they're not blocking these two guys right here, they'll arc that guy out to take care of a linebacker or safety. And they also have this H-back coming from the other side of the formation, um, bypassing these two defenders who are being read, and he works up into the linebackers and safety. He doesn't get his hat on anybody, and the guy he doesn't get a hat on, which I believe is the safety, makes a tackle. But, again, uh, it's so easy just to say, well, we should have done that when you're watching film. Uh, you're not actually in the shoes. So, um much easier to say <laughs> your rewind. So uh, there's midline triple, and we'll watch it real quick from um, the end zone view, which is a little bit cleaner. So again, quarterback's reading the defensive end and then the linebacker, and we'll play in slow motion. Right off the bat, defensive end squeezes down hard. Quarterback sees that, so he pulls it, and you see that linebacker he plays inside, working towards that quarterback, which tells, the, which tells the quarterback to pitch it. And then, bam, there you go. You get it on the perimeter. And you have that left tackle out in front, sealing off the outside from that defender. And then it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Defender makes a good play, good tackle. The sideline is undefeated. Uh, sideline wins there. But good <laughs> good pickup of uh, eight yards right there. And that's midline tri uh, triple. And, again, there's a bunch of clinics that go into the deep details of it. But um, – that is essentially what it is. Interior, you're reading an interior defender and the next guy outside of them. And it's uh, just another form of triple option. All right. I have 23 questions just here on this first play. Okay. <laughs> so I'll try to, I'll try to limit them to maybe four or five. Okay. I, I do. I just, just want to note though, the, 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 the very fine detail of that defensive end, not the walk-up linebacker, but the defensive end, the quarterback is reading the very fact of him turning his shoulders, that one thing can determine the entire play, correct? It, just correct. that one thing alone. That's correct. You know, whenever you see that defensive uh, D end turn his shoulders, that shows that he's completely sold out to the run. He's not going to make the play on the, on the uh, quarterback if his shoulders are turned all the way inside to the midline. So that's a, that's a dead giveaway. Um, a lot of coaches will coach this play up. If the DN, even if he squeezes down, still hand it off. But as soon as he turns his shoulders, that's when you know he's fully committed to stopping that running back right, headed down the midline, and that's whenever you know to pull it. Let me ask you this, because that, that 
no, no matter what option you're, you're talking about, so often the, the action of the defensive end seems to, to be a hinge point in a lot of these plays. What happens? How, how hard is it for the quarterback to make the read if you have a defensive end who is either A, very good, or B, just very confused, who doesn't show you any commitment at all? How Because the quarterback has only a split second to make this read. What happens if you're playing against a defensive end who's not really – he's just kind of standing there on a, on a particular play? So, one doubt you hand it off. The uh, coach okay. always, uh, you can never be wrong handing the ball off, but you can't be wrong taking it yourself. And so, if the play begins and the, uh, that defensive end that you're reading is kind of shuffling inside, but he's not fully committed, that's just, hey, play it safe, hand it off. Your quarter or your tailback who's headed down the midline is at least going to pick up two to three yards um, because he's already headed down the midline with a bunch of steam and that defensive end isn't fully committed yet. So, anytime there's any ambiguity uh any cloudiness gray area then just hand it off that's the safest bet um and this is even that simplifies it yeah yeah that like even right here like it's kind of a late read i mean he turns his shoulders late so uh okay if i were in his shoes i might have handed it off but he did squeeze down pretty hard but yes usually when in doubt hand it off and if you see his shoulders turn you know uh, you need to pull it this is fascinating stuff to me now I, I noticed, um, maybe not so much from this view, but from the other view, it seemed like at first glance, it seemed like the, the far outside run was very much open because of where the defense lined up. Everybody's pretty much at that hash mark. Um, well, you got the, got the walk-up linebacker who's a little bit out there, but everybody else is over in the middle of the field, more or less. Yes. But athletes are so quick that you, you can't just say, well, there's a lot of space out there in the flat. Um, it, you, you certainly can't just – those athletes are so quick and usually well-taught, you can't just say, well, there's a lot of space out in the flat. We're just automatically going to do that. You still have to make the read, correct? That's so important. That's right. That's right. It's tempting uh, before the play. Wow, look at all that space. I'm just going to pull it. But, you know, you can, they can totally blow up this play because even if you see all that space out there, that defense end right. could run up field and that linebacker could also run up field. So if you pull it, I mean, they got two for two on the outside and you're you're in trouble. So – that's why even as a quarterback, it, it might be tempting if you see something pre-snap, but um, you always have to confirm what you see uh, post-snap as well. Well, and I imagine if you're a young quarterback, it probably only takes you one or two plays to get busted before you figure out, these guys are a little quicker than maybe who I played against in high school, right? <laughs> yes, all these dudes are being – most of them are being paid a scholarship to come out and play, so they're all right. athletes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's, if, if you will, I want to go back to the uh, the quarterback himself. Yeah. Uh, as soon as he makes, as soon as he gets uh, gets the ball in his hand, basically, are, are we talking one half of this decision? Is it a full second? It, like it's quick, right? What, what's his time frame? Probably, may probably a little less than a second. I mean, okay. What he's going to be doing is he. Uh, he has to make his decision by the time the ball gets to his front hip. And you see, as soon as the ball is snapped, that tailback's already headed downhill. Um, so, and you can see the quarterback right here. Let's see. He starts with the ball on his back hip, but, and he's going to ride the tailback. But as soon as the ball gets to his front hip, that's when he has to make his decision. So again, that's okay. probably less than a second. But if, you, if that ball passes your front hip, you just got to hand it off. Now, how many times, and I know, I know it will be different for every program, depending on the size of the playbook and, and, and what offense you're running, but in, a, in an ideal world, a realistic world, how about that, um, how many times would Coastal Carolina or maybe the average college have run this particular play um, in practice before they trotted out on the field? Um, are, are we talking – 100 reps or 50 reps or what what are you on average average college what are you thinking i think average college if you're going to run midline triple and any triple option for that matter you've got to rep it hundreds and hundreds of times i heard a quote okay. a while back. i don't remember who said it they said you can't date option you got to marry it and so teams that just <laughs> run option casually a lot of times they don't have success but when teams uh, have a identity in it, like Coastal Carolina does, they do really, really good at it. And it, I mean, it just takes so many reps for everyone to get really good at, especially the quarterback making those reads. I mean, they're they're so quick, and you got to be right because 
you know, this play can easily get blown up in the backfield just because, you know, you're leaving two guys completely unblocked. So you got to practice it over and over and over hundreds and hundreds of times. And that's, that to me, that's fascinating. Hundreds of times. So I'm sure in, in a way, if you're, if you've got juniors and seniors, you're talking about two years, you may have been working on this, but in reality, I guess that starts back with practice after at, at the beginning of the, at the way back at the beginning of spring, right. Um, is when this really kind of kicks in and starts. That's right. Yeah. It's gotta be one of your bread and butter plays probably run into some spring ball. One of the first installs in fall camp. I mean, it's uh, it's that it takes a lot of time to, to learn option. It's a commitment. I, and I like what you said about uh, you've got to marry it, not date it, because it is a commitment. You've got to commit to this to to be good at it, right? That's right. 100%. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I have more questions, but let's go ahead and, and let you roll the second play. And I think some of the questions may be common uh, to, okay. to each, each play. Okay, great. So here's a play action pass. Um, and since Coastal's very heavy midline, triple, and just option team in general, they really made the most um, of this play, of the play action, because the defense is so locked in on stopping the option because it's so difficult to stop ready that they end up biting really hard on triple option play action. So before we even focus on the post wheel concept over uh, to the boundary, which is at the short side of the field, um, let's watch the play action from uh, the quarterback and both running backs. So it looks just like midline triple right here. Quarterback clears the midline, running back runs right down the middle, and the quarterback even attacks the outside for about two to three steps before dropping back and flipping his hips. And then you see that offset running back. He acts like he's the pitch man, uh, but he ends up actually just being the check down. So you can watch, especially, let me show you, let me circle them. These two guys right here, really all the defenders and even this, this safety. If you watch all three of these guys, I mean, they completely sell out to the run. They run downhill, and then you see two of them flip their hips around hard because they realize then it's a pass, but uh, <laughs> it's too late. So um, they're terrified of the triple option. Who isn't? It's a great offense, uh, especially from the pistol. So now that we've seen the play action uh, fake, we can look at the concept itself. So right now the quarterback has a post wheel concept with a check down. And so this is usually just a true progression read. Uh, I say that, but then there's going to be 500 coaches who disagree. Again, there's, it, <laughs> uh, so you just got to do it the way that works best for you. But okay. uh, right now you'll see from the outside receiver, he's running a post. He breaks it at 10. And then this uh, H-back who motions across, what he does is he also he's also part of the play action fake. You see he kind of stutters. He takes his time getting out, making it look like he's getting ready to block, but then yeah. he attacks up the sideline right there. And then, of course, you see that offset back uh, for a check down if the first two guys aren't open. And so you see the whole time the quarterback's going through his uh, play action. He's looking downfield, and he sees that corner sitting. And then he sees this safety right here. He's got his hips turned, and he's hauling outside, probably thinking that that receiver who's about to break on a post is actually going vertical. And you got to know as a quarterback, if you know your receiver is about to break right here at 10, and then this safety right here is running the opposite direction of where the receiver is about to break, you got to know that's about to be open. And that's exactly what happens here. You see the receiver break, and then that safety has to totally make a 180 degree turn. And he still, he still does it pretty well. Like he makes a speed turn, but he can't catch up to that post. I mean, you got one guy running full speed one direction, and then another guy running the complete opposite direction that has a change. Uh, direction going back the other way against a receiver who's made to run fast. So um, really good read by the quarterback. He is patient with it. And I mean, right here, you see how this receiver wins. He's breaking this way. This safety's hauling butt to the sideline. And that's why it works right there. And uh, again, he's patient with it. He let it develop. And then this corner right here, he's sitting on the wheel. So the wheel's not going to be open. And then you see, uh, I think this is a linebacker. Yeah, this linebacker's uh, out here in the flat so he's got the check down this uh, corner sits and the safety hauls his tail out to the sideline which helps that post open up so we'll watch it one time uh, full speed unfortunately I draw too much on this there you go pretty play so that's just post the wheel right there and it's a great uh, it can beat a whole lot of coverages and I like running against cover three but uh, this works too pretty and we'll watch it right here you can see 
right when this play starts, this the quarterback will hop off the midline. And again, the midline is the line right down the middle of the center. He clears the midline so the running back can attack straight downhill. And that's what really sells this play. Just, I mean, it looks identical to their midline triple, which we just went over. And then, bam, there it is. You get everybody biting down. It makes uh, makes attacking through the air a lot easier when all the linebackers are screaming downhill. So there it is. There's the a, post wheel. It's a beautiful play. And a lot of what Coastal Carolina does is beautiful. And, you know, football can be very sloppy. I, you know, despite of best laid plans, right, football can be Carolina is one of the more efficient programs in, in the country on offense, right? They, they are very crisp, uh, very efficient, uh, very well practiced. They seem yeah. to know pretty much what's going on all the time, right? Yeah, no, they're very crisp, very clean, and you can tell, like, com their players are really comfortable with what's happening, and uh, they look confident. They play fast. I love the freeze frame. Just about, about the time that the quarterback has um, – uh, he's he's probably already made his decision, but he hasn't thrown it yet. That freeze frame right there is beautiful because you get a good look at what's already happened. And you mentioned that the linebackers biting down on the play action and <laughs> yep. the safety who had had to turn and, and was anticipating something different. Did a decent job still, but it was just too little too late, right? That's right. Yeah, he, he and, caught up the receiver pretty quick. And all of the – but this particular play, because it's play action – it's really only successful because they were successful at running the football earlier in the game or earlier in the season, correct? That's right. Yeah, they – I mean, they establish a great run game and uh, the triple option can beat you quick if you're not sound defensively. So, uh, it's definitely – I see – I would – I totally understand the defense selling out to the uh, play action here. I mean, you watch this guy. He's completely fooled uh, whenever the play starts. I mean – Completely caught off guard. How hard is it for defenses? And I know for the most part you're an offensive guy, but you, you, you see it all. How hard is it for defenses at every level now of football? They could literally be looking at it. They, they might go a whole season and not see the same offense twice, right? Uh, they are being – it's like being put in a mixer or a blender. It's kind of hard to <laughs> – you, you do the best you can to read your stuff, but it's kind of hard with today's rules and today's – designs it's kind of hard to know what's coming and to stay on balance right absolutely now they have a lot to digest in a really short amount of time you know they're reading uh linebackers read guards they read uh, they have to you know look at the alignment of uh the running backs they got to watch a motioning h back they got to you know, watch a play they got to worry about a play action post being ran behind them i mean they have to they have a million things to worry about you know i never plan on being on the defensive side of the ball because uh you have to game plan way longer, and uh, you'll pr you probably have less sleep. I mean, these guys, especially the Coastal, you have a lot to game plan for. And all year they go seeing – they see air raid teams, teams that throw the ball a lot. The Coastal does too, but, you know, they rarely see true triple option uh, like Coastal. Let me ask you this, and, and, and by the way, the audience, just so the audience knows, you and I rehearse none of these questions. So I'm, I'm giving them all to you on the fly. So if there's something that you're not quite sure of, by all means, just say, hey, I'm not sure of that. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, the the uh, the pre-snap read. A is there a pre-snap read? B if there if there was a defense that they don't like, um, what play might they opt into? Is there a pre-snap read, and what would it be if there was one? I think you know the quarterback knows this is a pass play action pass, and uh, usually what. You do as a quarterback, and again, everybody coaches this differently. Is you'll take a look at is it one high or two high? You know, is there one okay. safety high in the middle of the field, or is the middle of the field open with two with two safeties? And then you check the alignment of the corners. And uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, defenses disguise it, but a lot of times uh, you can still tell um, what covers they may be in, which gives you a uh, which gives you at least the clue of where the ball might be going, or at least where more likely the ball is to go. So, uh, again, you know, defenses are good dis at disguising it nowadays. And, uh, but, yeah, the quarterback usually has a has a clue. And if he doesn't, he's just going to work through his progression here and uh, go one, two, three. And if he doesn't like anything, you can tuck the ball and run. And that really is, you know, you, make, you mentioned the defense is disguising. This is my last question before we hit the third play. 
that really is one of the best weapons that defenses have these days, right, is to just disguise what they may or may not be doing so you don't really get a chance to opt out of a play. Uh, that, that really is one of their best things, right, as opposed to being prepared for every single thing that an offense might do, which is basically mm-hmm. impossible. This kind of disguising what you're doing as a defense is, is, is one of the most useful tools these days, right? Absolutely. Now, if you have the quarterback confused, and that I mean, that means he's going to be playing a little bit slower. He's not going to be able to get the ball out exactly when he wants to. And if you slow the quarterback down and you slow his reads down by disguising coverages, it helps your uh, helps everyone on defense. I mean, uh, slower decision makes the quarterback guess. And, you know, a guessing quarterback probably isn't throwing as accurate as he possibly could be if he felt confident with every throw. Those little half seconds, whether it's the linebackers biting on the run and then quickly discovering they need to back out, or whether it's the quarterback being a little confused, that little half second can make all the difference on any given play. Um, All right, third play, roll it out for us. All right, here's a – it's a quarterback, a fake quarterback draw with a running back pop pass. And, again, I don't have this playbook. This might have been an RPO run pass option, meaning the quarterback could have run the ball himself or thrown it to the running back who's going to attack right down the middle here. Uh, Could have definitely been an RPO, actually. Um, so what happens here is I'll get rid of this drawing is the quarterback is looking, he sees, uh, first off the middle of the field is open. There's two high safeties. You got a safety here and a safety here, you know, and the corners are outside too. And what's going to be happening here with the outside receivers is they're going to be running uh, a slot fade, you know, from the slots, which keep both of these safeties wide and then. Uh, the outside wide receivers are going to be running hitches. And so that keeps the safeties and the corners uh, staying outside. You know, if they're running an inside route, then they'd be brought inside. But what happens here is the quarterback takes a brief drop back and he's looking at this uh, middle linebacker right here. This running back is attacking right down the middle where all that grass is uh, between the safeties. And after a brief moment, um, the quarterback is going to start running uh, up the field, it's going to look like a quarterback draw. And what happens here is you see this linebacker sitting here staring at the quarterback. And as soon as he sees this quarterback, he takes a drop, right? As soon as he sees this quarterback drop his hips and take a couple steps forward like it's a quarterback draw, this linebacker play comes up really quick. And this running back right here sneaks right past him, right in the middle of the field. And the quarterback's able to put a ball right on him for a touchdown. And so um, again, this might have been – I'm just watching the offensive line here, and it doesn't strike me as a uh, as a design draw like or an RPO. It looks more – since they're pass setting and they're not attacking downfield, that's, that's why I'm thinking that uh, it's more of a design, uh, design play. But anyway, regardless, it's quarterback pop pass to the running back. If the, if the linebacker were to run – with this running back the whole way and stay with him, then the quarterback can just take himself uh, up the middle. That's a fascinating thing you mentioned, that it looks like the offensive line is set for pass protection. It does not look like that they are trying to start working their way a yard or two upfield to kind of get that that draw play that you mentioned, even That's though right. it might be there as an option if, you know, if all the passes are, are covered. Um, how much of this stuff can you run with a quarterback who's not very mobile, um, for instance, I, you know, and I'm not going to drag you into the schemes for West Virginia, but West Virginia just picked up JT Daniel on the transfer portal. He's yeah. not the most mobile guy in the world, very accurate passer. Um, but coming back to Coastal Carolina, they've got the mobile guy. How much does it limit you here on a lot of this stuff if your quarterback isn't particularly mobile? Uh, it definitely limits you. I mean, having a fast quarterback that has a history of um, attacking with his feet and doing well with his feet, definitely uh, that's going to be in the back of the linebackers and DB's minds throughout this game is, hey, he can hurt us on um, his feet too. You know, I know Coastal Carolina, uh, they do a lot of speed option, midline triple, that kind of stuff because they do have a fast quarterback. But, you know, with a, if you have a slower quarterback, you can still run option, but it's just going to look different. There are going to be more RPOs where instead of, the quarterback or the running back taking it, uh, it's going to be either the running back gets it or the slot receiver running a slant behind the linebacker gets it. And you're going to read that linebacker. So you can run a form of option uh, with any kind of quarterback, but that, that kind of option might look different, if that makes sense. 
No, absolutely. That's a this play is a devastating play. I'm sure it feels like a knife in the heart for defense to watch. To watch, you're, you're trying to cover everything, right? You're trying to cover the wide receivers. You're trying to cover the tight end. You're trying to right up the middle, and for a wide open touchdown, that that's that's got to just take the wind right out of you, right? Oh, absolutely. It's I mean, it's devastating. This linebacker's put in such a difficult spot. I mean, he's sitting here and he's, he sees the quarterback, you know, take two steps, hard steps forward, looking like it's a draw. And then he has his hand out feeling the running back. And by the time he turns around, the running back's already full steam ahead, five yards past him. And you can see the middle linebacker falling off balance. And, you know, I mean, I don't know if he can be mad at that linebacker as a defensive coordinator. I mean, that's just a great design by the, uh, oops, by the offense. And it's just a really tough spot to be in as a, as a Mike. Absolutely, which is the whole point, right? You're trying to isolate, yeah. you're trying to isolate certain guys, and even if they do something basically right, um, you still have a backup for that, correct? That's the whole point of this. That's right. That's right. You, you know, you can you have two options here. If that Mike, that my, uh, middle linebacker does run at that uh, running back, well then, you know, you can look at it here. There's holes for the quarterback to run right here you know, right here. And then this outside linebacker is running outside of the slot fade. I mean, so really this, this really could be an RPO. Like you hit the running back. If the uh, middle linebacker doesn't run with them and the middle uh, linebacker does run with them, the quarterback can attack on his feet with all this open grass right here. So yeah, there's always a backup option. You want to give your players options. So if something bad happens, you know, they, they have another opportunity to gain some yards. And that, yeah, like we said, that's the whole point of all this. That it, it's not just to be fancy or tricky. It's to make sure that you have, as a quarterback, you have good sound options no matter what the defense does. That's right. That's right. Give your uh, give your players opportunity to make plays and uh, give them chances. You know, that's your job as a coach is to set them up for success. So if one thing doesn't work out, make sure that uh, your players have another opportunity to win. One quick generic question. This would be for any play. And then we'll hit the, hit the final play. Um, yeah, I, I've often thought, um, is it a fair comparison to think about boxers in a ring? And you're basically trying to shift and shift and shift. And you just catch the other guy off guard between the jabs and the hooks and the movement of the feet. And, and you're trying to catch the other guy off guard. So that no matter what he does, you're going you're gonna to get a chance to get a good punch in. That kind of feels like modern offenses. No matter what the defense does, you're just trying to shift, 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 and and get the defense off balance. That's right. That's right. I mean, it's a game of punches, and you can, if you're throwing a right jab constantly ten times in a row, and then you can hit them with a left hook. You know that they're <laughs> waiting for that right jab, and that's you know what what you can do here is you you can set up defenses uh, and get them used to, um, you know what you're what you're running, and then hit them with something else like a little a little spice here and there. So. Yeah, he can definitely set him up. All right. Well, um, I, I assume we still have time left for your for the last play. Absolutely. All right. Go ahead and take us through it. So here we go. This is uh, speed option. All right. Here's another drawing that's probably hard to digest, but they're not reading an interior defender here. They're reading uh, the end man on the line of scrimmage, which will be this defensive tackle right here. So um, this left tackle is going to arc out and take any defender that's here in the alley. And then all the other linemen are going to cut uh, the defensive line and the linebackers off uh, from the outside. So this is an outside hitting play. The quarterback and running back are going to attack the edge of the offensive line right here. And this defensive end runs upfield right at the quarterback. The quarterback can pitch it out to the tailback. And if this defensive end widens, comes out this way, um, then the quarterback can take it right up the middle right here. But basically, uh, it's the offensive line's job to cut everybody else off from this play, really just to isolate the defensive end on the quarterback and tailback. So we'll let it run through. You can see um, right here, so right when the play begins, the quarterback and running back open up like it's a downhill run. Almost, It almost looks like midline. Uh, their quarterback clears the midline. Running back takes a couple steps straight downhill. And then right after that brief downhill fake, that gets all the all the defenders coming inside because it looks like an inside run. And then they pop right back out uh, and attack the perimeter. You could also call this freeze option, which is it's the same thing as speed option, except you add a downhill run fake, which freezes the defense. So this is called freeze option. 
It's the same thing as speed option. You're still reading that defensive end. And you see that defensive end right here. He runs directly at that quarterback, and that tells the quarterback to pitch the ball, and that uh, tailback gets the ball out in space with a left tackle out in front of him, and he ends up scoring right here. Um, great play, great design. And so you can see this left tackle, too. He loses ground to really get wide. I mean, he gets out here and picks up the first threat, and he has two other receivers out here blocking for him. Pitch the ball, got left tackle out in front. Running back makes that guy miss. Left tackle gets his hat on a guy. Uh, pretty play. And then we'll look at it right here, too. Um, so there's the read. He's in a four technique, head up on that left tackle. So they're reading him. And then all these other defenders, it's the, it's the offensive line's job to cut everybody off like this um, from this side of the play. So, again, you isolate that defensive end, cut everybody else off, and then you make it. Then if the quarterback makes the right play, it all works out. Makes the right read right here. Defensive end crashes down on the quarterback. Pitch that ball out. Bam. Then you let your players go make plays in, in space. Really pretty play. That's a touchdown. So that's freeze option. It's just a little – it's a stem of uh, speed option. And uh, I love it. You know, I see Clemson running it now. Oklahoma's running it now. Uh, they, not, they've been running it in the past. But it's just one thing I'm seeing in football way more, even at the high school level. A lot more teams that you've never seen it run any sort of option are now running – Speed option. There, I, I'm going to show you how old I am here I, on my next two questions. Like, when we were growing up in the 90s, when I was growing up in the 90s, I don't want to say never, but you almost never saw this stuff at the NFL level at all. You didn't usually see it on the college level unless it was some directional school that just wanted to do something a little different because of a major talent disadvantage. And then there weren't that many high schools that were doing this stuff. Um, yeah. It almost felt like, but I'll tell you who was doing a lot of this stuff. It was kids on PlayStations and Nintendos yeah. uh, thinking, how can I get my fast guy at tailback or running back or at, uh, at quarterback and, and just get them the ball somehow, like you said, out in space. Yeah. And it, it almost feels like that generation grew up and worked their way through high school through college, and even some filtered into the NFL. Again, this isn't necessarily an NFL offense, but you do yeah. see it at times. Um, it, it, it almost feels like that generation grew up. It, it wasn't that the older generation adopted this stuff so much. Yeah. No, I think, I think you're spot on. Uh, you know, I know triple option, like true flex bone triple option stuff is, you know, things of the past, you could say, uh, to the flex. If any flex bone coach listens to this, I'm sorry, but it's old. <laughs> And, uh, but this is like the new way to do it. And this, uh, right. and you, but you see it, it has success. It's just a, it's an old concept and that was translated into a modern way of doing it. And, uh, it works great, but yeah, I mean, it's, you see a lot of younger guys, all the coaches in their twenties that I'm keeping in touch with right now, we all talk about spread option. You could call it, you know, where, or pistol, um, you, you can run a lot of option from the gun and, you know, kids enjoy after coaching high school for two years and running both the flex phone and spread like kids enjoy being from the gun, you know, like ground and pound is fun for us coaches, but kids, they, they like throwing the ball. They like getting the, uh, getting different players, the ball. I mean, they, this is the football they see on TV. They see play action, air raid attack. And this is, you know, I, I think this is the closest we're ever going to get to, I'm going to get burned if this gets posted on Twitter, but this is the closest we're going to get. To like triple option <laughs> football in the future. I don't really think we're going to see much more flex bone in college and of course never the NFL. And then even in high school, like teams are walking away from it. I will say you know, though, the true, the true flex bone in the high school and college level, I think it'd be smart to implement it because not many right. teams see it. Almost no teams see it. In college, I don't think one power five school, no, no power five school uh, or group of high school even runs it. You know, I like Georgia Tech used to and they used to be ranked and now they, they switched to the air raid or spread or whatever you want to call it. And they're not ranked and they're losing six, seven, eight games a year. So um, <laughs> anyway. You're totally fun. right. Um, I watched the Baltimore Ravens even, and they run a little bit of option um, yeah. early last season against the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, the Chiefs had no answers for that, none, because they don't see it ever. And the Ravens with Lamar Jackson sitting there and as tough as nails, offensive line and running backs and tight ends, 
they, they do a halfway decent job of running that option, especially against the defense that's never seen it before. I kind of feel like you and I are the defense. We don't know where the negative comments are going to come from, but they're going to come from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, You're Mark. right. <laughs> hey, just talk to me. So, you know, hey, if you got a problem, go ahead and slide into my DMs. I've seen a lot of Twitter drama. We don't need that. Uh, right. <laughs> Go ahead and go ahead and call me just in person. You know, you don't need to blow me up in front of everybody. <laughs> right. Well, well, before somebody blows us up over uh, the flex bone, witch bone, all that stuff, triple option. Yeah, we we understand that they used to do that 100 years ago and so forth. But this is a new way to run this stuff. that We've seen the last decade or so where you introduce run pass options, where you mix it in with lots of other things that the offense can do. And it's building on what guys used to do 50 and 60 and 70 years ago. But with the athletes today and the rules today and the innovation today and the willingness to do it today, um, it's kind of like triple option or flex bone or wishbone on steroids, basically. Yeah, absolutely. It, it really is. It really is. One final question, and then we'll wrap up. Um, I, I've noticed on a lot of the plays that were in your book, which we'll mention in a second, and even some of these plays here tonight, how vital it is that wide receivers block, that running backs block. Uh, I can remember, and again, this is the second thing that's going to date me here. I remember very well in the 80s and 90s, um, teams talking about how difficult it was to get wide receivers to block mm -hmm. and how difficult it was in some cases even to get running backs to block. It, it was a real issue. Yeah, doesn't seem to be as much of an issue anymore as far as willingness, but yeah. still, in terms of actually technique and performing it, one wide receiver doesn't even touch the guy on a play. Running back uh, or tight end misses his, his block. Uh, these yeah. plays are toast, right? The, the blocking out there is vital, right? Absolutely. No, that's one. That's one uh, aspect that's overlooked, and you know, no fans watching a wide receiver block, but um, wide receivers can turn a five yard gain into a touchdown. I mean, usually the guys who are making the tackle, once the ball on like triple option, once the ball gets to the perimeter, you usually see either the safety or the corner make the tackle. It's not a defensive lineman or a linebacker flying all the way outside. If uh, wide receivers block well or can run a guy off, like that's the difference between getting tackled five yards downfield and then the uh, pitch man bouncing it outside with that wide receiver block sealing off the defender from the outside. And that's how you see uh, big plays happen. So receivers have a huge... A uh, huge role um, in the run game, and uh, I think that's you know one thing that's being more popular, or more talked about at least, is like uh, what no block, no rock. That's what right. coaches say. If you don't block, like why are we going to throw it to you? Make sure you take care of your teammates. And you know, there's a cliche saying. I try to stay away from coaching cliches. Like uh, how hard do you play when you don't have the ball? It shows how much you care about your teammates. So right. I think there's some truth to that. Uh, and I think that's – I think it's pretty spot on, actually. There is. I, I saw that in play after play. I was like, my gosh, if those two wide receivers don't block, this this play will never work. And yeah. if that tight end on a different play doesn't pick up the block, this play is toast. Uh, and, and that's something that 25 years ago was very much not the case, especially with the wide receivers um, and even yeah. more so some of the star, star wide receivers. Absolutely. I could do this all night. We don't have the time. And I don't think anybody's going to listen to us all night, but I have enjoyed it, Jake. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for doing this, man. I really appreciate it. You know, thank, again, thanks for having me on. And I appreciate, uh, you know, you letting me walk through some film and asking great questions. So it's always fun to talk some football. I promise we will do it again if you're willing. If you're not, I'm just going to keep, you know, messaging you until you get <laughs> willing. Hey, I'll be um, on here again anytime you need. I'm, I'm always happy to talk to you. All right, we'll do it again. Uh, this is your book. This is called uh, Plays from the Pistol by Jake Franklin. I think there's 120 pages, 130 pages in here yeah. of real plays that actually happened on a college football field um, from real teams. And you name the teams, Kansas State, Minnesota, Crockston, Oklahoma State. There's a lot of Coastal Carolina in here. Um, and, and tell the audience about this book, uh, where they can find it, what all may be in it. <laughs> Absolutely. So you can find this book on Amazon. If you just go to Amazon and type in plays from the pistol, it'll be right there. Uh, it's 1999. So again, I try to keep the price low. Um, and it's a book full of pistol plays. Uh, again, I, you see the pistol more and more and more throughout college football and even the NFL. And it's becoming more of a thing. 
Uh, and it's a, it's a great formation or a great backfield, really, that can set your quarterback up for any sort of triple option. And it gets your uh, running back running down downhill. And you also don't give a – you don't show a tendency. Uh, whenever you have a running back to one side or the other, you know, the defense can guess. He's probably going to come across the quarterback run that direction. From the pistol, they can't key in on that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of benefits to the pistol, including great play action because the quarterback will turn his back to give the ball to the quarterback. And whenever the defense sees the quarterback turn his back, you know, they're running downhill, sold out to the run. So there's a lot of really good benefits uh, to the pistol. And this book basically just tries to give a lot of creative ideas um, of different plays you can run from the pistol. And I wrote this so – if, you, if you're an offensive coordinator or an aspiring offensive co coordinator, you can take this book, open it up, and find some good ideas that you can add to your offense uh, this next upcoming season. And Jake, I've told you this before, so this isn't new to you, but I'll tell the audience. The one thing I like best about this book, not, not just your writing style, which is very clear, but on yeah. every single play, you, you list in detail what the quarterback is reading, how he makes his decision, specifically which player or two players he's looking at to make his decision um, as he's going through some of these RPOs and, and the yeah. pistol plays and, and all the other stuff. I really like that. I suggest getting it. Even if you, even if you're not a coach and you just like to learn about this stuff, this is a very well-written book and we'll look for more from Jake Franklin. Well, I appreciate that a ton. Thank you so much. Jake, I've enjoyed it, man. And uh, thank you so much for watching us today. This is Benjamin Parker with Sports and Money. We'll see you next time. Bye.